true indeed with you. Holy Circle Gaming, thank you for rocking with your boy like always. Definitely a privilege and an honor to do as such. You know what we're getting back into, that top five action. This time we're going to take a submission from my boy Raccoon HD. That's the screen name. Like I said, I'm going to do a topic on screen names for a different subject down the line. But this is Raccoon um, HD's top five games, his personal top five. Just to give you a, a quick brief about it, you know what it gives you? It gives you three shooters, it gives you two uh, two games from another genre, and it's a very good collection. One of those collections that I thought that I would typically see more often than not, but I didn't from a lot of other people's uh, selections. But this is what we're gonna get in today. Raccoon HD's personal top five, as analysis by your truly Mr. True Indeed himself. And let's go ahead and get it. First up on the list, Call of Duty World at War. Interesting choice that he actually, he didn't pick the franchise Call of Duty. He actually picked Call of Duty World at War in particular, which if I'm not mistaken, you know, Call of Duty World at War, great game. I think I only played a little bit of it, so I can't get into a whole bunch of details, but y'all can refresh my memory. Maybe I'm wrong. Wasn't this the last of the World War II games that they made before they started going into, like, the Modern Warfare era and the Black Ops era? I think it was, but don't quote me on it. But I'll tell you what about this game. Um, for all intents and purposes, it was the bridge blueprint between Medal of Honor, that franchise, and where we are now with Call of Duty. It was a good bridge between both. Call of Duty World at War, even though it was considered in the World War II era, the gunplay was official, you know, the multiplayer was I, but people was just trying to get into the multiplayer aspect. But the one thing that separated this particular Call of Duty, maybe from a lot of the other Call of Duties, maybe Black Ops excluded from it, is this one actually had a really good storyline to it. Had a really good story to tell, had a lot of good details as far as like environments and making you feel like you're in the World War II era. I actually, I'm not mad at Call of Duty World at War being on Raccoon HD list. I think it was a very good choice in which he chose that particular one. Now, most people who choose Call of Duty, they probably would have chose Black Ops. They probably would have chose Modern Warfare. And even me, if I was choosing a Call of Duty in particular, I would choose one of the two. I wouldn't necessarily chose World at War per se, but I'm not saying it's a bad choice either. Call of Duty World at War is definitely a very good, solid choice as far as like gameplay is concerned. And I understand why it's, why it's in Raccoon's HD Top 5. You know, graphically solid for its time. That's very true. Um, the sound on there, if you look, listen to the sound and the gunplay and the authenticity of the sound, they actually got the sound really right. So that one was good too. The story, the storyline on it, absolutely. And it was one of those games that actually helped to usher in the first person era that we're seeing now. I mean, Call of Duty is a great franchise and it's doing millions and millions of dollars now, but it took a game like World at War to step the stage. So I'm not even mad at World at War being on Raccoon HD's, you know, top five choice because it definitely is a good top five choice. Definitely a solid one, you know, and I'm you and I'm gonna talk about Call of Duty in different variations, but this Call of Duty was very good, very solid gameplay, nothing really bad about it. I mean, yeah, you could say that it was a little bit light on story and the multiplayer wasn't as solid, but it was solid for its time. And if I'm not mistaken, this was one of those games that actually helped usher in the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox and the 360. I know it's those games that kind of helped usher those in. In to bring it to the forefront of you know the first person shooters that we're in today so very good choice in picking call of duty world at war shout out to you raccoon hd very good choice what's next now you see this title right here kill zone 2 that's actually a very interesting choice when i was talking to raccoon hd about his choice in top five games one of the quickest titles he dropped out was Killzone 2. And it was like interesting is because when you think about shooters, Killzone 2 is kind of forgotten in the equation. You know, one of the one of the first futuristic shooters that was out first person point of view. Definitely a solid title. Now, I have a kind of ups and downs about it. I mean, personally, I didn't think that it was super duper off the charts. 
But I will tell you what I liked about Killzone 2. Killzone 2 is a great choice to be in somebody's top five, and here's the reason why. Graphically for its time, yeah, it was on off the charts great. Good title that it was because graphically it was really on point. The futuristic gunplay, yeah, the futuristic gunplay for Killzone 2 was something that we haven't seen at that point in time just yet. So, I mean, we saw it in the first Killzone, and then we kind of got revamped in Killzone 2, where they actually kind of expounded on it, which was really good. The storyline, very intricate, interesting storyline. Um, I ain't gonna say that it was off the charts. I heard um, better storylines, but not to say not to skimp on um, gorillas and what they what gorilla did with this particular storyline. The storyline is probably one of the most underrated things about Killzone in its entirety, you know. And I know people are slipping on Killzone because people wasn't really digging the Killzone 3 back at the time. But I'm not saying if you put Killzone in a franchise, you know, Killzone is a very solid game. You know, it's, and like I said, solid. When, and when it tells me about, you know, Raccoon HD as a person is, you know, his first choice, World at War, Call of Duty. Second choice, Killzone 2. Um, two relatively in gaming terms, I ain't gonna say they're super duper old school, but they are kind of old school shooters, even though they kind of help usher in the newer generation of first person shooters. Kind of a throwback shooter of sorts, but definitely tells me a lot about Raccoon HD and like how he likes the likes the gunplay aspect. I like that. But Killzone 2, interesting choice. So let me tell you how, why I say I'm not sure about Killzone. Because, yes, Killzone, Sony exclusive, great game. Gorilla did a great, outstanding job with the game. Shout out to them, especially on Killzone 2, but even more so than 1 or 3, or even the one that was sitting on the PSP. Definitely a great game. But here is my question. Would you put Killzone 2 with Resistance Fall of Man or the Resistance franchise. You know, I personally would take Resistance over Killzone because I thought Resistance did everything that Killzone was trying to do, but it did it on a little bit of a grander scale. Killzone was all about scaling, you know, big, big versus small, looking up, you know, big battlefield, you know, big fields, big fields of play. Yes, extensive storyline, intricate storyline. Guess what? Resistance was the same type game. Resistance was a great game when it came to all that stuff. So it's hard for me to kind of, you know, say Killzone for sure when I know Resistance did everything possibly better in that aspect. Maybe exception of the gunplay. I think the gunplay, like, you know, just literally guns versus guns. Maybe Killzone 2's guns are maybe a slight bit better. But Resistance... Man, Resistance was phenomenally off the chart. So you gotta give Resistance some love too. So that's what I would post to Raccoon HD. You know, Resistance or Killzone. Now, if you haven't played Resistance, play Resistance. Then come back and tell me, would you really take Killzone 2 above Resistance? I personally take Resistance. I'm not mad at you taking Killzone because Killzone, for all intents and purposes, is a great choice. Another one of those games to usher in good shooters, you know, that did see down the line now, you know, but it definitely was the blueprint for a lot of things. So, shout outs to Gorilla because Gorilla always made it a point to push the envelope a little bit. So, it was good to see this game on the list because not too many people pick Killzone in their franchise. I think he's the only one who actually picked it. So, shout out to Raccoon HD. Definitely a beautiful choice. What's next? Watch that. Grand Theft Auto. Now, y'all know good and well, Grand Theft Auto, Rockstar Games, is one of the granddaddies of games of all time. Facts. Let me tell you something. Grand Theft Auto, probably the, one of the most highest selling franchises of all time definitely in the top three no question maybe behind call of duty and the warcraft franchise you gotta say grant the you know grant the bottle as its entirety 
is a fantastic game. And the reason why I put Grand Theft Auto 5, because I, you know, me personally, I would tell you Grand Theft Auto 5 is the culmination of everything that Grand Theft Auto is working for. Way back from the top down view and the first, you know, the first couple of them to three when they transition to like a regular third person point of view type game and putting everything that they, that they did together to make Grand Theft Auto 5, you know, it was fantastic. Now, everybody's going to have their particular franchises of whether it's, you know, Vice City, because Vice City was great. You know, San Andreas, obviously, if you live in the West Coast, you definitely rocking with San Andreas. Four, off the charts for the time, which led up into five, which everybody considers a mass. And it's funny, because when you talk about Grand Theft Auto, and the reason why I know Raccoon HD put it up here, here's the first thing you got to put into that equation. Storyline, primo, off the charts, great game. You know, storyline in itself, it was well worth the gameplay just from a single player point of view, because for a good period of time, they didn't have any multiplayer component. The single player point of view alone made it off the charts. Storyline, on point. Voice acting, off the charts. You know, everything, you know, the storyline and the voice acting, they kind of go hand in hand, and the both of them combined made it for a beautiful experience, no matter which Grand Theft Auto that you pick, you know, outside of the first two. Um, the audio in it, you know, the music choices that they put was era specific. When they did like Vice City, when they threw all those Miami Vice style songs, some old school 80s joints, off the charts, phenomenal, great. When they did San Andreas, all that West West stuff, trust me, fantastic, great choice. Four kind of did a mix of a little bit of everything, soundtrack, definitely dope. Five, same thing, took the same formula for four, transitioning into five. All of which is great, no problem at all. What they did in 4 and 5 as far as like, especially in 5 with the multiplayer aspect, the multiplayer aspect, you would think that the game on its own from a single player point of view was this off the charts great? Definitely. But even the multiplayer was great too and that's hard to say about any game. Grand Theft Auto did everything right. Single player component, check. Multiplayer component, check that too. You tell me which game is that complete, where you're going to have a great single player and a great multiplayer. And let me tell you, if you split the two entities and said, I'm just going to play the multiplayer, you would give the multiplayer a 10 just as much as you would give the single player a 10. And that's fact. And so I understand when Raccoon HD picked the Grand Theft Auto franchise, it's because it's that franchise. Shout out to Rockstar. You know, I can't say nothing bad about that team, especially when it comes to Grand Theft Auto, because they put everything together to make it become a great experience. Whether you're playing on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you, there's very few gamers that haven't played Grand Theft Auto. Now, I know it was the controversial game. I know the blood and guts. I know that there's too many kids that play it. That's true. I am in agreement with that. If you have a kid that's under the age of 16, they should not be playing Grand Theft Auto. Let's keep it a buck. I have to be a good parent here because you shouldn't have your kids playing Grand Theft Auto. This is a grown person's game, not a kid's game, but it's going to run around, shoot stuff, and think that is cool when they grow up in life. That ain't cool. That's not for kids to be watching nor playing. It is for grown people who actually understand the dynamics that it is just a story. This ain't real life. We don't go out and jack cars in real life and we don't go out there and be popping people in real life. This is not how we get down. We're just gamers. So you can take that to those, you can take that to the state assembly and you can take that to the parents who don't understand. You know, don't have your kids playing this. But for the adults who's playing this, Understand, this is that top-notch game. This is one of those games that I'll probably talk about more and more as we go along, so I'm not going to go into super-duper deep detail, but Grand Theft Auto as a franchise is that franchise. It's not in my personal top five, not for anything else, because like I said, I have specific reasons for what I have in my top five, but don't get it wrong, Grand Theft Auto, pound per pound, I would tell you, is one of the best gaming experiences around. Raccoon HD, great choice in picking Grand Theft Auto 5. What's next? Now, when Raccoon HD pulled this game out, I was like, wow, very interesting choice right here. Forza Motorsports, 
Forza Motorsports, supposed to be the rival of Gran Turismo. You know, I'll tell you what, um, Forza, the team that does Forza, fantastic team, by the way, because if you're going to put yourself up against a great franchise like Gran Turismo, you better do everything that's worth the goods. And don't get it wrong, it was a super high bar that Forza Motorsports had to maintain. And did they do it? So when Raccoon HD pulled Forza Motorsports out of the rack, I was like, okay. Here's the thing that I liked about Forza Motorsports. You know, the first couple of ones were solid, but I tell you what they were getting right. The car customization, flawless, not bad. Did some good, realistic stuff to your cars that you could actually control the handling. Which goes into the second thing that I like Forza. The, the car control, especially if you're using a racing wheel on it. Oh yeah, definitely a great handling game. The sounds pretty authentic you know not perfect but they were pretty authentic in the first couple of ones and then progressing on into the later ones that you see and going into horizon very good but when it came to like car damaging and modeling great game as well you know it had a lot of great things about forza motorsports that if you're an xbox player and you said i need that definitive racer that sony has you did get it in Forza Motorsports. I mean, I've seen people run videos on it and see them like sliding their cars out and drifting and donutting and still like gas brake dipping on it. You know, I've seen competition play with Forza that was very competitive, you know, very realistic. So it's not like cars were overly better than the other. It was really came down to how you handled your car. Cars were handling really realistic you know if you had an all-wheel drive it would handle differently than if you had a uh, front wheel or real uh, rear wheel drive you know definitely these are all the things that you accomplish in forza motorsports i actually like the game too now do i like it above gran turismo it's hard for me to say because i actually think that they're kind of like 1a and 1a and a half i think they're both really good they're just good for a little bit different reason. I will probably take Gran Turismo, but it's not by much. I mean, Forza Motorsports did everything that you wanted to do just as Gran Turismo did. And even when you got to the point and when, um, when Forza was doing Horizon, it actually had the knowledge to try to shift the switch up what they were trying to do and actually make it a little bit more, a um, little bit more fun for your arcade type racers to jump into as well. So definitely a good choice. So Raccoon HD, choosing Forza Motorsports that's definitely was a good one and let me break it down for you real fast again cars selection definitely great track you know the courses that you had we we're driving on definitely rendered very well the control whether you play on a regular controller or whether you're playing with the racing wheel controls tight sound tight visually outstanding nothing bad about forza motorsports as a racing franchise if you haven't had a chance to play it yet definitely get your hands and play any one of the forzas i think you'll have a great time and when raccoon hd actually put it in his top five it tells me a lot about him and i'll go into that towards the tail end of things on his fifth choice and which is a very good one as well so without further ado let's get into number one Raccoon HD's number five. Need for speed. Now, you heard in my honorable mentions that I also picked Need for Speed. So when this man said it's in his top five, oh yeah, I was definitely with him with that choice because it was really, like I told you, super close to being in my top five. And here's the reason why. Because Need for Speed, for a racing game, it bridges both elements together. Give you the realistic cars with the arcadey feel to get your hardcore players to get involved with it because of the car selections and stuff. And your, arc and your regular casual players to get into it because... They have a feel for, I need a racer, but I don't want it to be like too, like too intensive, like Forza or Gran Turismo, but I don't want it to be like too arcadey, like you would get in burnout. Guess what? 
Need for Speed was the bridge gap for a lot of racing fans. And it's the reason why a lot of people play racing games now. It's because of the Need for Speed franchise. And like I said, you know, the storyline in Need for Speed is one of the things that they needed because, like I said, they had to bridge the gap between what they were doing in the old school Need for Speeds with Porsche and Lee trying to be realistic, and they had to kind of bridge the casual players to bring them in. So having a storyline to connect those two together was a much-needed push. And like I said in my previous honorable mention, if y'all want to look at that, is one of the reasons why not just the Fast and the Furious franchises, but other franchises kind of look to Need for Speed for that car inspiration and stuff. One of the things that I didn't get a chance to talk about with Need for Speed that is very vital to what they do is the customization aspect. In the new school Need for Speed especially, the customization aspect is off the charts great. You know, you could put a lot of different wraps on there, different colors, get your own style out there, especially done in the newest Need for Speed. Great game, but as a franchise, they were always pushing the envelope to let you kind of develop your own style. Pick your own style car. If you like to whip it in the bins, cool, you could do that. If you like to smash in the Lambo, because most people keep it a buck, ain't gonna never really have a chance to do it. This is one of your ways to actually smash in the Lambo, and you know, if you wreck your Lambo, it's not gonna be the end of the world. You could do that with Need for Speed. You know, you could have your car in there. If you actually have a Honda or a, you know, a Subaru WRX, believe it or not, or if you have like a Mitsubishi, like, you know, Evo, Believe it or not, those cars are all featured in there. And guess what? You actually can put your own car in there to a degree. If you have one of those cars, it's like developing your own cars. Like, what would I do if I actually had a chance to soup up my car, put, you know, put whatever colors on there, put whatever engine on there to handle it, to get it to handle the way I wanted to? That's what you get out of the Need for Speed franchise. So, like I said, it's a great franchise. I definitely concur with Raccoon HD when he put Need for Speed in his top five. It was very, very, very close of being in my personal top five because like Raccoon HD, I invested a lot of time into it. So definitely shout out, definitely a great, fantastic choice when it comes to a gameplay. And what it really tells me about him is that, look, he likes his cars. I mean, he's one of those guys who like his cars, so that's what it tells me about Raccoon HD, and especially when you talk about his two of his top five games, you know, Forza and Need for Speed, tells me a lot about him, lets me know that he's about his car play. So, shout out to Raccoon HD, definitely a fantastic choice when you're picking Need for Speed. Y'all see him right there. This is Raccoon HD's top five games. Let's go over them real fast. Call of Duty World at War, very interesting choice right there. Same thing goes for Kill Zone 2, believe it or not, very interesting choice right there. Grand Theft Auto, the franchise, can't tell me that's not in most people's top five franchises of all time. It's in Raccoon HD's, is it in yours? Then the two driving games. Forza Motorsports, the realistic racer, Need for Speed, the hybrid realistic versus arcade racer. Can't go wrong with either one of those. So Raccoon HD, shout outs to you. You know, this is a very great collection of games that you have put together here. So there is nothing wrong with them. I like it. Hey, fans, y'all tell me what y'all think. How do you like his top five? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Did would there be games that you would change out of it? If you think so, send them in the comments below. Send them to the Twitter page. Send them in, you know, any way you want to connect to me possible. Cause I would definitely be interested to see how you think about this particular top five. Y'all know how we do. In closing, for myself, Mr. True Indeed, representing the Holy Circle Gaming. We're going to do it again next time. Another top five, another list, another breakdown. Until the next time, y'all, y'all know how we do. God above everything.